In this video we will be building top bar swarm boxes um, and I will be building them out of pallet wood. Now the audio for this por first portion of the video was so bad that I'm not going to use it. I'm just going to do a voiceover. So we start with pallet wood here and what I'm doing is taking a look at it and looking for square straight edges and good boards. Um, we're going to be joining these boards together to get the correct width in order to make the hives. Now building these is the same as building a top bar hive, the difference being that we're going to be cutting down the length of these boards. On a top bar hive I would use the full length of the pallet board. So once I've selected a couple of boards, I will organize everything I'm going to do and we'll get out the biscuit joiner which I'm going to be using. I picked this up for $25 at Harbor Freight. Um, it's a pretty decent piece of equipment and great for joining two boards edge to edge like this. This is a biscuit joiner. It creates a notch in the edge of the board which you put the biscuits which are in this container in. Um, with a little bit of glue to hold everything together. You'll also need a pair of clamps to clamp the board together. These were two dollars a piece at Harbor Freight, so relatively cheap. And of course you're going to need glue. We line the ends of the boards up. We're going to make marks on these boards to mark where we're going to put the biscuits. So to do that I'm going to need just a straight edge. A straight piece of board will work and I'm going to put five marks on this board across the two boards so that we get the biscuits in the exact same location on both boards. You just want to make sure that that board is straight when you're putting it down to draw the line. Now on a biscuit joiner you've got a mark at the front there and there's one at the back side that let you line up with this mark on the board. And what you're going to do is line that up with your pencil mark, turn it on, and then plunge it into the board and it will cut that hole or that notch that's needed. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut the other four notches in this board so that we can get all of them ready. Now if you look carefully at the edge of this board, it has cut semicircular notches into the edge. Normally I would have aligned that to be more center, but it's really not that important on this particular project. And get the other board up and line those notches up. Now as long as I line the mark on the unit up to the mark on the board and push in, all of these biscuit holes or these biscuit notches will line up with each other and then we can glue it together. So I'm going to do the second board the same way I did the first board, line up with the mark and plunge into it. The blade on this unit is inside the metal housing so it's almost never exposed and what I've done is locked it on which it has a, a button that lets you lock it engaged. I'm just moving down the board and putting the notches in. Now we need to get everything together to do this. Um, glue clamps will get the biscuits out here. I'm gonna need five biscuits. If you look close I got a broken one there I didn't notice. but I will in just a minute. And we're gonna need a hammer. So we tilt the board up and we're gonna take this glue and put it into the notches. And we wanna get a good quantity of glue in those notches. Basically, we fill them up. We're going to do this on both boards. 
I kind of like to make sure the notches are full first. So we turn the board up and we go ahead and press these biscuits, as they're called, into those notches. Now, sometimes these biscuits get tight in that they won't slide in easily. And for that, you persuade them with a hammer. It doesn't take much, just a few taps to press it in. Now that I have the biscuits in place, I'm going to go ahead and run a bead of glue down the other board. This is to adhere the length of the board and not just where the biscuits are. Now comes the fun part. We got to get all these biscuits to line up. And it takes a little bit of finagling and working at it. They don't always go together easy, especially with pallet wood, which can be a little bit warped. And I believe I lift these up just a hair and everything lines up. Now, go ahead and hit it with a hammer to knock the boards close together. And then we're going to take these clamps and we're going to attach them on the board and clamp it down tight. Once this board is clamped, it's going to need overnight or 8 to 12 hours for the glue to set up before you can continue this project. So I have two more sets that need to be done and clamped. I'll get those set up and clamped and get them set overnight and then we'll get back on this project. Yesterday I glued up some pallet boards. We got those set up so they're now solid. I'm going to use those for the sides, maybe for one of the ends. I got another solid piece of wood, some leftover from something else that I'm going to use for the end pieces. We're going to go ahead and get that done. And I'm going to show you how it's made. Now, when I made my original top bar hives, I saved a couple of pieces from it. Um, specifically, a few, few of the top bars I made extra. And a piece when I cut the end pieces so that I could get the angles correct. So I'll show you how I'm going to do that. All right, as you can see, this is one of the top bars from my hive. I put cleats in it. Now, one of the reasons that I left this top bar off is because I have a big knot here. It's a hole. Didn't want that in the actual hive. So I know that my hive width is this. This is a board where I cut the end in order to get... The angle so I can do the angle cuts to get the end pieces. So remove this up to the end of this board and I'll show you how I originally came up with that angle. So there's my first angle. This is uh, one of the pallet board pieces because I know I want it to be as wide as a pallet board so I can use them on the bottom. So we'll go ahead and mark it here. It's going to be my bottom. Turn this over. Come right up to this bottom mark. Line everything up. Nice and even. Alright, so there's my first one. I got my lines marked on here. We're going to take a circular saw and go ahead and chop that edge off. So we get a good edge. Scoot that board down and cut the other one.
All right. We now have one of the ends for our top bar. Yeah, top bar fits it perfect. So that's one. Now we can turn this over, put it here on the end since we've already got one line cut and cut the next one. If you do this, you want to mark the piece that you're using as master. Always use the same master to cut it so that you don't drift that line any. They'll always be the same width. However, I can turn this over. There's three. And I'm going to put a tick on the board. And four. Yes. I will be able to get all four end pieces out of this one board. The reason it doesn't have to be 100% perfect is because any gaps or spaces that you get, as long as they're small, the bees will fill in with propolis. So they'll kind of fix it up for themselves. All right. Next bit's a fun bit. Now we get to do the math. So they need 35 to 40 liters of space. So we need to measure this out and determine, do the math to determine how much volume we're going to need. So how long that sideboard is going to be. I'll put a link up to the math, but I'm going to pause right now and go do the math and make sure I've got everything right. So the math works out to 46.29 centimeters. All right, I'm gonna take one of these boards I glued together. And the only thing I've got in centimeters is a soft tape measure. 46. And a third. Should be right about there. All right. So I know how long it needs to be. I need a straight line. Got a piece of board here. Actually, this will be easier. Forty-six and a third, right there. And we line up the two dots, just like this. All right, that's my cut line. Easy enough. All right, I messed up my calculation. Let's do this again. 46.29 plus the width of the board times two, which is it's three centimeters. So I need to come up and do three centimeters more. Plus three centimeters to make up the width of the board 49.29 all right so i'm going to need 49.29 centimeters of length 49 and a third and a straight edge between those two points one right there one right there 
Put it on that line. We have our boarded our master length. We're going to use this to go ahead and cut the other board. So we should be able to set this up here. Mark a line. Again, mark that as master so we know what our master board is. our master board back out line it up so I can get two out of these pallet boards we have our four length boards we have our four end boards the rest is gonna get easy because I'm gonna go get a drill drill bits um, screws and some glue and we're going to screw all this together and glue it together then I'll be down to cutting the top bars and this round I think I'm going to do the top bars different the last round for the beehive itself I ran cleats these are cleats on top of the top bars to guide the bees and where I wanted them to put the comb um, I'm going to try a different method which is basically running a groove down the length of it I'm going to go ahead and mark these where they're going to connect. I want to know where I need to drill to make center. I'll go ahead and mark this one at this end too. All right. So I'm actually going to put a couple of holes through each board is a pilot hole. Okay, so we got the pre-drilled holes. What I'm going to do is take some of these screws. make sure they're the right length this time yep that'll work all right so we're gonna put these screws down into these holes that I pre-drilled but not just through until I get a little bit of a point like that sticking out the back side I'm gonna use these to mark the point to pre-drill this board line this up at the bottom and press and that should give us marks pre-drill those holes a little ways in I want the screws to go in a little easier go ahead and lay a bead of glue on this I went further than I needed line this up one Two, three, four. So those four are in. So we get a good camera angle on it. Um, okay. Get this top one in. And then we will line up for the bottom one. Put it in. I'm 
do the middle too. Okay. First side is on. Second side will go on a lot easier since I now have a stand that I can put it on. I know you can't see what I'm doing here. I'm lining this board up with the bottom of the box so we have top section. I just drilled two pilot holes. Since I've got this up at an angle now that I can work, I can come in with glue and run with two pilot screws in and then come back and dig the drill the pilot holes for the second set. So we'll line this back up like that. So when you do this, the one thing that I've always noticed is that this last board never really lines up right because of the way things hang. You kind of have to maneuver everything into position. So with that in mind, I drilled my initial hole at the bottom. I'll grab a screw from my bag. Go ahead and get it started in this bottom hole. Poking through a little bit. Let's line that up. And run it in. That'll kind of hold everything in place while I do these other holes. Now the hives that I have currently out on my property, I didn't screw together. I uh, used a nail gun to assemble them, which, in all honesty, went a whole lot faster. And for those, I used uh, one and a half inch hot dip galvanized ring shank plastic coated nails, which are exterior grade nails for doing like decks. Well, actually, they are the nails that I used to do the deck on the cabin. So, that's where they came from. Leftovers. Alright, let's get these last two in. Okay. And that's the basic design. Again, this is the top bar from my hive out at the property and it fits. You'll note there's a gap here. That gap should be uh, pretty close to the thickness of a board. What I'm going to do when I get down to it, after I get all the top bars cut, is cut a board to go in here and go ahead and put a hinge and a latch on it so I can latch that board down so when it's moved, the top bars don't move. Other than that, it's a pretty good fit. So we got both of them built. I go ahead and take a couple of these pieces of uh, wood from the pallet. Grab me a pencil. What we're looking for is a good, clean, solid connection. No gaps at the bottom. Don't want to give them a hole to go in other than the one I'm going to cut. Pull that forward a little bit. That's good. That's good. Since I'm off a little bit, I'm using a couple of boards that are, oh, a little off themselves, so to speak, and making sure that they fit snugly. They appear to. There we go. These have got busted off edges, so not a big deal. Get these two boxes set out of the way. And go ahead and chop this off. To put a bit of glue down.
and line up this board on the bottom. And get a little bit of gap there. I may fill some of those gaps in. You don't have to, but um, I believe I got a tube of caulk out in the garage. It's not doing anything, so. As long as you got free stuff, what does it matter, right? So far, it hadn't cost me anything. It's been pallet wood and scrap wood and some screws I had laying around. And come up and do this front corner. Caddy corner or opposite from the other one. Down in tight. Another one across from it. All right. Looking good. For the next stage in this project, I'm going to need to get my table saw out and my miter saw. And I am going to slice boards down to the proper width. And then, after they're cut to the right width, I'm going to use the miter saw to cut them off to the right length so that I can put top bars in here. We'll run notches down the middle of the top bars as well. Top bars on my top bar hive. This is actually a, a top bar from it. They are just slightly over one and a quarter inches wide. Now it's important that you get, get the width correct. So what I'm going to do is a setup so that top bar into my saw, adjust this blade up a little, run it right up to the edge, lock everything down, and then I'm going to come back and measure it to make sure that it comes to the correct width. And it's just a touch too wide. All right. Okay, so, so I got plenty of boards down here that are left over from the, um, pallets. Pull some of these up. Most of them are not perfect. Of course, most pallet wood is not perfect. So, we're going to have to cut and square some of this up. Um... I'm going to toss that one. Yeah, I can work with these. Well, some of these anyway. Alright. Let's have a go with this. Get it. Got me what I needed. Okay. So now I'm going to take this blade and I'm going to crank it down just so it's about a third of the way through this piece of wood. And then I'm going to move my fence over so that this cut. should go right down the middle of this piece of wood.
Now I'm actually testing this on a cracked off end so it's not that big of a deal if it's off. Let's see. Three quarters. I think that's right. No, not quite. Almost. It actually needs to come in just a hair more. As you could tell when I was ripping those top bars, the wood is not in the best condition. There's cracks, there's checks, there's parts where it's split. So what I'm just going to do is take my master width one here. Go ahead and mark. We're going to cut these down to size. So after I cut them, I'm going ahead and setting them down into one of the top bar high one of the top bar swarm boxes so that I can make sure I've got enough so we got one of the top bar hives set or one of the top bar we have the top bars finished on one of the swarm boxes and I'm going to go ahead and show you that. Just get the saw out of the way a little. There it is. Got the top bars in. We got it screwed together. Still got to put a, an entry hole in it. A piece across the top to stop the top bars from moving and I got some scrap plywood over there I'm gonna cut a piece out of and put on top of it then when it goes into a tree we're gonna need uh, we may need to make a mount to mount this into the tree but that's not a big deal probably just a few pieces of two by four got all my top bars cut got the uh, curves cut in the center of them Got them into the swarm boxes. I went digging in the garage and found a set of leftover hinges from when I did the cabinets at the cabin because I thought I was going to have more than I did. So, let's get in here. We're going to go ahead, get my little drill bit out so I can pilot hole these. Probably going to need this too. Now, these bars here and here I'm putting in so that the top bars don't come out when it gets moved. Because when I do move these, if they get bees in them, you'll take the whole swarm box down, take it down to where your hive is, you'll open these, move that out of the way. And then you will take a top bar out and put it into the hive. So, really, once it's once the bees are on the bars, the bars are what move, and they will move from the swarm box to the top bar hive. Now, when I do that, I need to do that in such a way that we make sure the bees don't go back to the swarm box. All right, so let's go ahead and get these initial holes, pilot holes drilled. And I'm going to do one and then get one of these little screws out and screw it into place. So 
so that I can put this where I want it. All right, and drill the other four holes. Here we go. Now, because these hinges were designed for cabinet doors, they actually have a spring in them and kind of lock in place. So they may work better than I expected. And honestly, I don't remember what I paid for them. As I said, I bought them for the cabinetry in the cabin and didn't use them. Ended up going with uh, curtains instead of doors. But they weren't expensive. They were probably less than a dollar a, piece, a set. So we got this first one in. Oh yeah, that actually locks that in place pretty well. It's not perfect, but I can make do. Nothing's ever actually perfect. Alright, we'll get this first pilot hole drilled. These little screws out. kind of locks the hinge in place so that when I drill the rest of the holes it doesn't move. Alright. Now for the fun part. We get these in And it will be time for me to drill the entry holes. Give the bees a way to get inside. We're about ready to put the access holes. How the bees get into it. And that's where these little puppies come in handy. <coughs> these are lids off coffee cans. And they're yellow. Bees like the color yellow. What I'm going to do is come up here. Right about there. Get on this one first. We'll come right about here. Put a screw in the middle of it. This drill bit is about a third of an inch. A little bit bigger than a third of an inch. I'm going to come in and do the first one. The second one. So there's two access holes. And I'm going to come in with my pocket knife. Clean that up just a little bit. Okay. So there's the two access holes for the bees. So when the hive or when the swarm box is occupied and I'm ready to actually move it, I rotate that and the bees are now trapped inside. If I want, I can put this hole there. They have one access hole, or I can give them the full two. Makes it real easy to lock these hives off. Or these uh, makes it real easy to lock these swarm boxes off. And come midsummer when swarms are less likely or not happening, I can come in and rotate those around just like that, and no wasps will get into them either. So that's pretty much it. All that's left is for me to cut a couple of pieces of plywood just to set over the top of it. And then when I get out there, if I need to, I'll cut some 2x4 to nail into the tree to set them on. But I'm going to try and find some branches that are at about the right height and 
v-shape that i can just wedge these down into and bungee cord them into place that's it that is a couple of top bar swarm boxes to match my top bar hives